Hey everybody, it is Cinnamon Cooney, your Archerpa, and today I'm going to show you how step by step you can create this gorgeous eagle watercolor. I'm going to explain to you the techniques, the colors, everything that you need to know to be able to create this for yourself at home. On the mic is my husband, John. Hello. He helps me do these live streams by one, turning everything on because I can't turn everything on and also making sure that the robotic cameras are facing what you need to see so he can zoom in so you can see the bloom or the technique whether the paper is dry whether the paper is wet all that stuff that is such important information for you um, to be able to create something I, i'm noticing something uh, on this john is that our video cuts off the whole first intro it's, it's this is the second time it's done this hmm. I'm on this channel. It. I'm watching over here, and it seems like it's rolling in okay. No, it did, it did the thing again. It, it came in like when I had been talking for a while. So, huh. again, I'm sitting in Cooney Archer, but I'm going to show you how to paint this eagle. Um, it's a really, uh, this is our secondary channel. Uh, it's our watercolor channel. We wanted to create a dedicated space for learning watercolor. I uh, am really excited to show you how to do today's thing. All right, so I have here Fabriano 140-pound uh, cold-pressed paper in a 9 by 12 watercolor block. The block means that all the pages are glued together, and then what I do is I peel them off of each other. Mm -hmm. This prevents warping and wrinkling. I also have the new Fabriano 1264, so we can do some testing and talking about techniques. Today, the color palette is going to be incredibly neutral. Oh, I see LA for Dreams and Robin B, Tammy and Linda. I know I saw Patty earlier, and I see Heather C. and Tina. This is so good to see everybody. Thank you guys for coming in um, and to make sure that I've got all the things that I need. All right, so for today's color palette, it's actually going to be a little more limited. We might use some nickel ozo yellow. We will definitely use Payne's gray. We may get into the Hansa yellow medium and the pyro red. For sure, we will be using the ultramarine blue, the burnt umber, and the quinacridone gold, we may get into uh, phthalo green. Mm -hmm. We might get into transparent parent pyro orange. I do not expect to get into opera pink. <laughs> so I have colors that I use every week, but I don't use every color every week. Mm. These are the colors for the year. And if you'd like to know what those are, those are in the description below. There's also a link to my website if you are not a person who draws. Uh, with a traceable, and we have instructions on how to use a traceable. If you search the Art Sherpa How to Trace, you'll find two videos how to do that. One of them is just a quick kind of explanation of it, and one is an hour-long look of every single way you could put an image on a surface. So hmm. they're pretty comprehensive. Let's start out by looking at the techniques that we're going to need to be able to do today. We're going to need to be able to do a couple of things. One thing we're going to be able to need to be able to do, this is a number eight round is to draw with our brush. We're gonna need to be able to make lines. See how I'm doing? Mm -hmm. You want a brush that you can do that with, where you've got some lines. The other technique that we're gonna be doing, I'm gonna, I'm gonna dry my brush out, is something called dry brushing. That's where the brush is dry, and it goes over the surface of the paper, and it doesn't uh, bleed in. And then the other one we'll be working on is something called wet into wet. So I'm gonna pre-wet the paper, and let's grab some of our nickel ozo yellow and see how that blooms everywhere that the water is. And then if I come in from the other side with the gray. Mm. Right, those are blooming kind of into each other. So that would be wet into wet. That's another thing that we're going to be doing. And then also we're going to be glazing. I'm going to grab some of my nickel ozo yellow and show you that. That means that what's underneath is dry. And I come over with another color on top. Ah. So those are the basic techniques that we're going to be using today, and those are the ones that you're going to be working on. Um, I'm covering these right now because I know as you're, if you're new to watercolor, those terms might be unfamiliar, uh, the concepts are. But I'll tell you the basic thing to remember with watercolor is that the paint goes where the water is. Your paper is very important. 140-pound um, watercolor cold press would be the words that if you're really, really new to painting to remember, and then if you can find a block where all the pages are glued instead of being open and loose like a tablet, that can really help your result as well. Are we ready to jump on in, so ah. Mr. Eagles? So let's begin, I think, up in the areas of him that are very, uh, what I would call tight or controlled. These are the ones where we're really aware 
of where he is. I have pre-sketched him with a graphite watercolor pencil on my surface. But again, if you are not drawing it, just use the traceable and the transfer method. That is a perfectly acceptable thing to do. It is not cheating. And you have to be able to use the traceable method because you wouldn't want to ever experiment on your expensive watercolor paper. I'm going to pre-wet the eye at first, kind of getting everything in here a little pre-wet. Because there's some colors I'm going to want to get in. Let's bring the phthalo green over here to where everything is. I'm going to get some of my nickel ozo yellow. And I'm going to make, mix the two of them together. I'm going to come here and start to paint in a very light green. And come in and grab some more yellow with my brush on the toe. Towards the front of the eye. Maybe a little more yellow. And I'm letting everything bloom. The eye at this stage is a little bit wet. So these colors can kind of bloom together. Blending on the surface of the canvas. Working together to do that. You can bring a little bit of your Payne's Gray over to the green to darken it. I might even get some burnt umber. Oh, that's a nice green. And come to the back of the eye. I like to do this at this stage so that the colors all have a chance to integrate into each other. It's real easy to come over with a dark color, but it's hard to lighten. So you've got to kind of have a plan. I'm going to come to the inside corner of the eye as well. Maybe over the top. I don't want to put a lot of pigment. My brush is not heavily loaded. I'm going to rinse out fairly well. Wipe my brush off on a paper towel. And come back with the toe and kind of softly transition these two. See what I'm doing? Mm -hmm. So let's let that rest for a moment before we do the next thing. The white, white reflections we're going to do with a fluid acrylic paint. We could have done it with brisket or with just being very, very, very careful. But today we're going to just be relaxed and do this with white acrylic paint. If you don't have white acrylic paint that's like this, like the craft paint or the fluid acrylic from Golden, you could also use gouache. That would be perfectly acceptable. Let's start painting in the beak, which is another area of him that is very, very controlled. Man, I have to say, I'm, I'm, we're, we go from recording Acrylic April to editing to going live, and I can't remember. Where so you are, what you're I, doing. I'm putting out some uh, nickel ozo yellow and some burnt umber. I'm going to mix them together and start painting in his beak. So how do you mean? Well, it's just because when we're, when we're recording, it's just you and me here. But mm -hmm. when we're live, I also have to keep open the chat to like keep an eye on all that. So it's like normally... If they're not here, I, I'm much more focused on the, the switcher and the mm -hmm. different camera angles. Whereas when chat's here, I tend to keep a, the, the chat window open, which somewhat distracts me from the camera windows. Well, because I'm using my eight round and I'm filling his beacon with a very light yellow that I mixed with my nickel ozo yellow and my burnt sienna. Oh, would, uh, would acrylic... Okay, so if, do you, if, if the question is, do you think acrylic white, if you did not have gouache fluid white, would it adhere to the watercolor? Yes, perfectly. Okay. The watercolor won't adhere to acrylic, to the top of acrylic, but acrylic goes over watercolor beautifully, and you can use them as a multimedia. Ooh, the a thing good. is, is if you're in an art journal, you're going to want to use a wax sealant to keep the pages from sticking, and we got confirmation from Golden that that is what you should do. I'm leaving a little white spot on his beak to represent his reflection. Now that means if you if you do use acrylic white paint, once it's painted white, it will forever be there. You can't. Yeah, it's not coming up. And you won't be able to tint it or stain it with acrylic because I mean with watercolor because it won't stick to it. I'm leaving this kind of white reflection in his beak, and I'm using the brush to even pull up and sort of blend it. Now, yeah, it's sort of an important thing. I'm going to bring a little more of my burnt umber over here. And I may get some of my transparent pyro orange in there. Really, just any orange that you have. I'm telling you the exact colors that I'm using, just so you know. But in this particular case, it's not that crucial. I haven't worked the bottom part of the beak because I want to be able to 
kind of do some wet into wet in the beak of pop. In watercolor, you work from a light value to a darker value, and the paper is your white, so it's very important to preserve your whites where you can. We are going to be coming back with some acrylic, so if we were to lose it, we could put it back, but it's good practice to try to not lose it. You can see what's really nice is that things are starting to mm, sort of blend They really in. are, yeah. I can rinse out, and I can also kind of take a damp brush and soften this. I have a lot of control if I want it. On any bird that's a raptor that you're painting, one of the big things is, is if you're trying to keep it out of the parrot space, you need to give it a beak that kills, not a beak that cracks its nuts. Mm. So, and they're, a, and they're similar beaks. Like, trust me, you, do, you don't want to be bit by a macaw. Mm -mm. It will mess you up. They still have a pretty curved beak, but they actually have some different shaping to their beak to help them crack nuts and things. Whereas these guys have very, very sharp, sharpy, curvy, clawy stuff so that they can catch animals when they're out hunting. Let's get some Payne's Gray. Loaded up onto our brush. I'm just taking the Payne's Gray from my watercolor palette here. Now, I'm using tube uh, uh, watercolor. You could just do the half pans like Crayola. You don't have to have this watercolor. I'm using Daniel Smith and Core and uh, Holbein and Sennelier. Those are the brands that I like. Oh, I think some M. Graham, but you could just use whatever you have. And we for, we did not simulcast to Facebook today, so only YouTube gets the live. I'm going to come around the outside edge with this dark gray. I have a tendency to make all my birds super duper disgruntled. This is like a whole thing with me. I'm going to come in here and just very carefully, I like to tap out. That means I just touch the brush a little bit up and down and build up the eye that I know is going to be in the center here in a second. Oh, the eyes have it. They do. I'm going to kind of just bring a dark line there. Now I will be softening some of these lines and glazing to create some value changes, but right now I'm just putting in these major structures so that I can really, really see them. And come underneath the beak right here, fine line. Make him super dangerous. This is another way to do that because you kind of bring that little dark line in and it really sharpens it along that edge. Mm. And I'm going to come along just the finest, finest line. See how careful I'm being? Yeah. His beak there adding that little element in. I'm not really done with him in this space. I'm going to rinse out a bit. I'm going to come back with a uh, burnt umber. And I'm going to just kind of begin to paint in some of the space in his beak that maybe is a little more brown. We can even kind of darken the tip of, of it right here. We come down the front. Now I'm going to rinse out my brush and I'm going to soften this line a bit using a damp brush. Mm. You know, a slight circular motion. It's a way of blending. See how we're doing? I do. There's a uh, there's some good questions. I'm oh, ask me questions while we're going. I love it. So Heather's asking for Deborah because I missed Deborah's question. Hmm. And it said, should Deborah's frisket be gloopy? Well, so the thing with frisket is, and I'm going to do a whole like frisket deep dive because I think there's a lot of crazy information about frisket, is that 
you don't want to leave frisket exposed to the air. So I don't work for my frisket bottle. I pour my frisket off into something else that I can seal up or I'm going to use in one sitting and keep my bottle sealed because it will begin to cure, coagulate, and make frisket boogers, which are not intrinsically bad. I'll show you my bottle has been closed since like the last time we did it. And I'm sure there's some frisket boogers here. So you hear it's like kind of squidging going, I don't want to go. So right there. In the oh. cap, you see the frisket boogers. That's not unexpected, but there's no boogers in the liquid. All right. So as long as you don't have boogers in there, you're okay. I use this one because I really, it's just my favorite. It does a whole bunch of things that other friskets won't do. But universally, this comes from a plant. This is real, uh, this is um, real deal kind of plant-based mass. So yeah. I love it. You do have to kind of keep it out. That's a nice little blending on his yes. little beak there. I like it a lot. Coming over the top, maybe with a little bit of glaze. And that's okay to do. So on him, there's these areas that are painted very loosely in these beautiful washes. And then areas that are very, very... Uh, painted meticulously and you're constantly balancing between those two things. I'm going to make a shadow across the top of his eye. Mm -hmm. You know how I love the shadow. I do. Now he's a disgruntled bird as he <laughs> should be. He looks like a bird I paint. I'm going to rinse out my brush pretty vigorously and come back and once again sort of blend that using the toe of my brush while this green is still sort of what if I use pastel over watercolor? Should I seal it? And if so, with what? You can use pastel over watercolor. It's a beautiful, beautiful combination of mediums. There are new sealants that are for watercolor, and I have not gotten to test them, but we have friends that have. I know Golden's been actively testing them, and the results are fantastic. However, before we had all these new sealants, you would just matte and frame your art. And the matte and frame would protect your art, the pastel and the watercolor from UV light and from being damaged. So either is an acceptable option. Hmm. I'm just I'm just letting you guys know that these these new mat these new uh, sealants for watercolor they're super new to the market. <laughs> and whenever you get a, anything that's super new to the market, you got to kind of watch it just a little bit. I'm mm -hmm. going to bring a little transparent pile of orange over here to the back end. So I've got my burnt umber, my transparent pearl orange, and my nickel ozo yellow. You could just use your Hansa yellow if you needed to. Much like before, I'm going to create a very light color, almost like an ochre. I'm mixing the burnt umber and the nickel ozo together. Kind of come to the top of his little beaky area and paint in a fairly well consider a little bit of extension to be hmm. because this isn't all actively wet the colors that i put here on the beak will stay in the beak if this was wet they would start to bleed up into what i'm painting now so that's why you see me moving around areas going you know i really need to think about this I'm going to add a little brown down here. And then a bit here around the bump of that, but it doesn't need to go much past that. We're going to come back with a cool purple and almost like create an interesting shadow later. I'm going to get my brush wet again, picking up some of my brown. And actually, I need a very light lip here. So let's get a little bit of our nickel ozo yellow and burnt sienna. And just come under lip, beak. Come underneath here. And come around. Because that needs to dry a minute. Mm -hmm. There's just no way around it. No way around it. I might grab a little of my green have it kind of maybe play towards the back end here oh yeah i'm gonna tap my brush up and down give 
give him a little zhuzh, a little zhuzh. Really, until he uh, starts to get his highlights and everything in, it's just kind of all playing. Now that this yellow line is dry enough to let me paint next to it, I can keep it light enough to show. That's kind of like this under part of the beach. Just, I can't not think of the Muppets, to be really <laughs> honest. I just the, always the, think of the Muppets. The eagle. Yeah, it's it's really hard for me not to think of them. I'm going to add a little bit of the orange right here. Sometimes I like to just kind of come in, make some little marks. These are kind of dry over the beak. Hmm. Jennifer says it's hard to type in all caps on an iPad. It is. I didn't know that. Hmm. I don't type on an iPad. That seems counterintuitive. Trying to find her question. Oh, have you ever used a watercolor board by Aquiella? Uh, I've used watercolor board. They're not theirs, but I like watercolor boards. Hmm. I haven't used theirs. But I like them in general as a product. And when they're good, they're really nice because they prevent a lot of the warping that's very frustrating to you as a new painter that you're not going to love. You're not going to be like, oh, that's not, my, that's not my favorite is what you would say. And I would have to agree with you. Let's get a little more shadow. We're going to come add that next layer of shadow again across here because he just has a shadow under his eye. You want him to have, like, some shadow under his eye. My black? Well, my paint's gray. You could use black, though. Come back again a couple places to show a little shadow under the beak there. Maybe even kind of shading up here, kind of accentuating that curve. You can do. Mm -hmm. If this is dry, you can put in a little kind of sesame seed of a nostril. So a bird can breathe. Birds got to breathe. <laughs> in well, all seriousness, those, bird got to breathe. Yeah. Now, my eagle himself is going to be a mix of ultramarine blue, Pyral red and burnt umber. This is kind of fun. Maybe a little transparent pyral orange. So I'm going to take a little of my pyral red and ultramarine blue and make this weird purple. And I'm going to use it a couple places. To create some interesting little shading. On him, I like him very much, so this is fun for me. And when you kind of bring that color around, it can make some fun effects. Initially, mm. I'm going to come under his belly. I'm going to really rinse out. I'm going to cut not his belly, under his neck. Hopefully, I got a good little curve there. And we'll start with the wet into wet. He's a combination of wet into wet and uh, dry brushing. And the thing is on him, I would say that I almost did him rainbow. <laughs> that would be like, cool, actually. Gosh, I do a lot of rainbows. What I said to myself, I do a lot of rainbow. I'm pre-wetting my paper so that when I come to do this, it's going to be a little bit easy. Now, interestingly enough, up here is a lot of more controlled painting. So I don't need to take that pre-wetting much past the eye. I think he got a little pudgier this time. Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to start with maybe biasing a little more to the ultramarine blue.
and just allow this to bleed around. Each time you do this technique, each time you do a subject matter with this technique, be a little different because the paint will always bleed out a little differently each time. So you can start to get some pretty decent control as you go. Now, as I paint out towards this edge here, I can get some nice kind of hard edges at the, at the base of him, All right? I've got this beautiful blooming. I'm gonna come underneath his little jaw, this space here. The combination of this only works with both wet and drying techniques. You're going to have both going on. I'm just going to work that back. If ever I need to lighten it up. See how that's going? Mm, that's, some, that's some purple. It is. It's a little purple. It's a little cool. I like it. Maybe a little bit right here to kind of accentuate what is underneath. I might grab a little ultramarine blue. Exaggerate that. Back into the purple a bit. Oh, I got into my quinacridone and I meant to get into my pyrrol. It won't hurt you, it just will be a very different type of purple. Some strong kind of expressive strokes here to speak to the feathers. And what's great is I'm going to come back into his wing. I'm going to get into my ultramarine, I mean my burnt umber. You can always get a little ultramarine blue into your burnt umber. It makes a gray. about the wing coming forward a bit. Isn't that fun? Mm -hmm. This is what I love about watercolor is this, this balance between I'm in control, I'm letting it all go. Come down. Now, another trick, especially if you're really new to watercolor, it's important not to paint all the paper. Leave a little bit, if you can, if you can handle it, of the white. Like that little spot there? Mm-hmm. I will never take that out because that's wonderful. I'm going to add a little transparent pyro orange. You just add your orange or burnt sienna. Get my nickel ozo. Maybe even pull that down here. I can bring this stronger color concept into the wing. I think this kind of goes. If I want a little more ultramarine blue, I can dump that in there. All right, when he's getting that little shape going there, I think I need to move his little shoulder down. And that'll happen sometimes I'll look at something and be like, your shoulder needs to move. But everything is wet into wet, so what's going to happen is this will all kind of bleed and soften into each other's space, creating some really fantastic stuff. Now rinse your brush out. Try to resist filling in white, if you can. 
I'm going to get uh, some all-terrain blue off to the side here. And I'm going to begin by painting the shadow mm -hmm. of the little arc. I've done eagles a few times. There's like one of the oldest videos on my other acrylic channel. It's of a time lapse of an eagle. And you can see that uh, I have a, has a feeling about it. I stopped doing eagles because they were getting suppressed <laughs> by YouTube. I like the eagles. <laughs> I do too, but I'm just saying, like, YouTube was like, no. Okay, I don't know what the issue was with the eagle, but. But I have decided, I'm going to come back to it. They can't stop me. Sometimes I will wipe out, take a little water, and kind of soften the color. You can always build up color. It's a little tougher to remove it. So it can be really nice to build it up. It's going to be more disgruntled. Mm -hmm. It's going to happen. Just getting back into that. I'm a mad bird space. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Let's add some shadows. Do you have any questions from the live? I do. Maybe I had some. We're just scrolling back up here. Do you know what brusho is? Br oh yes. Um, what is that? So it, it, well, it's a type of. Uh, so there's, it's a type of a uh, powdered. Uh, I think it's the powdered watercolor. Is the brusho hmm. and the best place to learn about it and see it reviewed honestly is the frugal crafter. Because she reviews all of that. I, I've used the. Um, the other brand that man i cannot remember the name of the other brand but there's another brand of it and i have used the other brand of it uh because i i met christopher crop and so i ended up with the other brand of it which is like this pattern watercolor and you kind of put it out there i've you know where i have a great example of it my watercolor splashy dog <laughs> i've used it in my watercolor splashy dog so i have a lesson it's on facebook it's the watercolor splashy dog where the splashy dog from acrylic april 2020 came from and I used it there, but I used the other name of it that I cannot remember right now. For the life of me. <laughs> so weird. It's going to come to me and then I'm going to just blurt it. I don't know if that ever happens to you. I'm going to make some little kind of light line marks here. These are like little feather energetic marks. Not intense. That is a pencil. Color burst. Ken color Oliver's burst. color burst. <laughs> so Ken Oliver's color burst and brush show are two types of watercolor. I think the brush show is uh, maybe less expensive hmm. and has a larger variety of colors. I'm not sure. Or Ken Oliver does the ones that have more of a blend. It is awesome. It does get everywhere. And if you have one little piece anywhere where moisture hits it, it goes, psh, psh. it's like um, alcoholic. And then it's very uh, glitter. <laughs> it's as transmissible as glitter. Let's bring some little lines kind of coming from. I can keep bringing in more and more color as I see fit, as I want. I do want kind of another glaze over this before I put in the little um, lines. His scowly glaze. Yeah. I want a glaze on his gaze. <laughs> I'm going to get a little of my purple over here. come around the back of his eye. I'm just going to exaggerate this just a bit into that area there. From underneath here. Definitely play with this. Give him that. It is kind of giving him a little bit of a. He looks good on him. Well, you know, he's an eagle. He's telling you don't 
don't start, I will have to just mess you up. Mm -hmm. Don't think I won't because I will, he says. I will do it. I'm going to take my red and my ultramarine blue. And come under here. We're going to create some little lines down under his little beacons. Just a little bit. That's why. Now remember, watercolor has color shift, which means just like acrylic gets darker, watercolor gets lighter. So sometimes you'll do something and it's like, whoa, I think it's too dark. And before you have a huge reaction and pull all the color up, give it a second. Because it may lighten up. I'm going to get a little of my red here from underneath. Playful. Being playful. Mm. You got to be playful. Let's come in and add some more uh, feathers. I think I want to go more to the red. I'm going to dry brush down here just a little bit because I think that's energetic. I'm going to come back up to the top of his head with more blue. I'm going to speak to the little roll over here. That has a brow. Smaller marks here, and then they kind of get bigger. And I'm going to rinse that out and kind of lift that a bit. Mm-hmm. Have some fun with that. Now, while all this is having a bit of a dry before I put any more like little feathering details, I can take some of my acrylic. I'm going to put it on my paper towel just so it doesn't get messy on my palette and I only need a little bit. And I'm going to grab a detail brush that I have dedicated to acrylic. And I have many, many detail brushes dedicated to acrylic, so I'm going to use one of those. And come to the back of the eye, and I'm going to tap up and down and kind of make a very bright re little reflection in the eye. I'm going to also add some to his little eye there, so it's a bit wet. And I might exaggerate some of what he's got going on in the beak here because I've got it out, and it should do that for me. Mm -hmm. 
And again, you could do a lot of this stuff if you use the frisket as a resist, but this can be kind of a nice way to do it if you don't want to use the frisket as a resist. If this paper is dry, then you can come back with a little bit of your purple, kind of more loaded darkly. And brush back maybe some defined little feathers back here. And oh, his little eyes like looks at you. He's a little darker. The other thing I might do with him is I might take another brush I've dedicated for watercolor. I lost a little bit of white at his cheek during the bleed through. I might take a little acrylic. Kind of put it back here. Mm -hmm. Just to make sure that I don't. I'm going to dry brush it. Now, once it's on there, it's really on there. Mm -hmm. So I've got to really think about where I put it. Just to make sure I'm happy with where it is. <laughs> but I do actually like that, so that works really well for me. I think that's just really just him. He, he's got such a tood on him. He has a tood. I, I don't know what to tell you guys. My birds always have toods. They They're do. tooty birds. <laughs> Paint a tooty, tooty bird. When you get your bird to a place that you're happy, right? Like maybe you're like, oh, no, I want the wing to come back maybe a little bit more here. Mm-hmm. For his overall shape, but when you get him where you're happy, then you want to take some color that goes in the piece and just give the signature. So that you can enjoy that. What do you guys think of that? I think that's amazing. So I'll take any questions, like one or two questions before we go. Okay, let's go back up here. Do, do, do. If we have any, you might not have any. Maybe you're like, no, that's exactly what I wanted to do today. They really like the the look of the eagle. It's a good eagle. He's a good Very one. Very 2D. Now, let's see. There were some acrylic April questions up here. What's going on? What is the status of acrylic April here? I'll let you just generally kind of go over that here. Okay. I so, right now, were... we are on day 14. I paint a few days ahead of you guys. And what that means is that I'm going through the daily painting process just like you are. So that way, you know, I don't want to be one of those creators who's like, hey, I've got a challenge for you. Here it is, and good luck, and I hope it works out for you. Um, so every year I really do that with you guys. That does mean that on occasion things in the calendar will change. So if I have a tired day and I uh, just had a vaccine, I might paint something not quite as complicated as maybe I originally imagined. But oftentimes that's a good thing because – Sometimes that's where you guys are getting fatigued in the journey too. So it creates a very good natural rhythm of building skills. Um, we're going to keep going through the 30th. I'm going to try to keep uh, Watercolor Wednesday going because mm -hmm. my watercolor community deserves to have their regular watercolor fix um, as they would like it. And I really enjoy getting my watercolor time with you guys. It's a nice break from the mediums that is going on. Um, actually, we're coming up to a challenge month in July, I think, Doodle Walk. So there's one that's out there in the world for watercolor. I'm not I'm not gonna do another 30 day program. It's very hard on the team. Mm. <laughs> so um so every day we're just building up a new thing on water. We're going over water again. We may do some water skills on uh, the channel here. I want to start getting some tips and skill videos kind of under well, our belt too. Here's a question. Will you be teaching watercolor at any of the getaway weekends that you're going to be yes. teaching this year? Yes. If you're coming to a retreat, you will cover some watercolor. If we have pastels, you'll probably cover some pastels. We will Wait. play with art material. You said, what's a retreat? Oh, uh, I have three art art retreats that are going on this year. We do a lot of free events and meetups and greetups, but these are actual like getaway weekends in uh, destination locations. Uh, one is in the Pocono, two of them in the Poconos, one is in Hot Springs, Arkansas. Um, one of the reasons it was great that we got vaccinated is so we could be like responsible uh, in having the events. Um, and the places that we're going are also like really aware of that. Uh, so we have one in October. 
in Hot Springs. I don't. Are there any tickets left on that one? I don't. I think it's sold out. I'm not sure. We well, we see the things. We keep having folks switch tickets around to different you, events. So you there's you can switch tickets. We let people switch tickets. So. Well, there's there's some stuff to that. It's not just Email. open switchy switchy. It's not it, open it, switchy switchy. Why are you telling me to say things when I don't know the rules? It's not open switchy switchy. <laughs> but we do have a way if you're attending one event that if you need to switch to the other, depending on which event it is, there's some. We have to pay some fees, so as long as it's all taken care of, we don't, it's not much. Yeah. It's, uh, so. You can bring uh, uh, significant others, partners, kids, stuff like that with you, but don't come. We have a way to do that, too, like an extra occupancy. But it's the idea is we go, and we have two weekend events in the Poconos. Like, you just come paint with me over a weekend, and, and you're painting with me. Like, we're painting together. And then um, Hot Springs, we have di- gotten the crazy idea in our heads we're going to paint outside, which I... We'll see how much we regret mm. when we get there. But we'll do some planar painting because I think it's good to know about that. But we also have an indoor location, so it's very flexible for our comfort and our well-being. The Hot Springs one, we're supposed to have like a destination meal and all of these things, though. It's our first year, so we'll be experiencing it together for that one. And then the weekends is local, so we can really check on them. And I'm mm-hmm. excited about both. You can find out about both of them on the website. And we have a concierge that will talk to you and ask, answer any of your questions, like with a direct line. So you do have somebody to help you. Um, I'm pretty excited about it. Uh, <laughs> Linda says there's a payment plan on events. Is that true? There is a payment plan. So they're not, they are like a vacation cost event. And we, we do understand like sometimes with a flex play option that that's much more doable and there is a payment plan. Hmm. And we have people coming in um, from all kinds of locations. But I understand like if you're coming in from out of your country and your country is still shut down, that is one of the reasons that we made it possible for people to move or switch or catch a different event. Yep. So that's why we're doing that and just know that, you know, just talk to us and we'll communicate and we'll make sure that things... Uh, uh joy am i going to teach the aqua pasto soon i don't i i have to get the aqua pasto in so that is one of the things i don't have anything immediately on but when i do it will be for you joy entirely for you (laughs) and i do want to use it because i am excited about it i like the idea of it i just haven't gotten the jar in i have ordered jars but i don't know if you guys have noticed but amazon's reliability is not fantastic lately and i've had about I don't know, a third of the things that I order uh, just be refunded to me. I've got a bunch of missing corn plates that are in the ether with little corn oh, yeah, things no, that checked. were supposed to be here for my daughter's birthday. Amazon said they've, uh, Amazon said they were not coming yet. Amazon said, so that's where I'm Amazon at with said. the Aquapasto is that Amazon said, and it's just been really challenging to get certain things in, which is why when you guys come to me and say, hey, I'm having a hard time getting an art material, you mm-hmm. get a lot of sympathy and compassion for me because I'm having a hard time getting art materials and mm-hmm. I know people, right? Where it can be like, I can't get that art material. Can you help me out? And I know people. Yeah. But, but I do want to, um, right now, we're going to just kind of keep it together on this channel where it's like a video a week. We do have plans to grow and expand the channel where it has uh, more techniques and tips and kind of becomes more robust like our acrylic channel, but we're not taking away the acrylic classes. That's the other reason it was really good. We really thought long and hard about should we switch the channels? Should we should we separate them? But we realized it's a good idea to do that because um, sometimes our acrylic community, when they see a watercolor class, panics and decides I have quit teaching acrylic. It was just like, they'll never be acrylic again. And I'm like, no, there's like acrylic on Tuesday. It's on the schedule. It's right there. Like, click the button and hit hit the reminders so you you can be there. Um, so that that way we're in our own space here and we can do what this channel needs, what this community needs. And of course, you can be part of both the acrylic and the watercolor community, but you guys probably recognize that the communities are a little different in their needs. Mm-hmm. Um, we're more at the beginning. Like this is kind of like a little one hoot little dude. We're more at the beginning of this journey over in watercolor, and we're like into this deep, deep, deep water, <laughs> literally over on the Art Turbo Acrylic channel. And then you know, I am still dropping these on Facebook. We got to get back to where we dual cast them. Mm-hmm. the The issue is that Facebook um, has really like if you heard about what happened to lockery sometimes shuts down your account like yeah. out of the blue and so even if you don't say anything wrong or do anything wrong you can get shut down so 
we wanted to make sure we had a backup there as well. That is what is going on there. Tammy Edwardson says, I will gladly pay you Tuesday for an art class today. Well, get your Spain Inch in. <laughs> I am what I am. They're Popeye. all free. I love Just, Popeye. Yeah. Popeye's good. Though, though I, I have to say that his friend, his guy, like, does not understand the terms of consent. And the only thing I think to say that cartoon is the kids haven't found it. <laughs> <laughs> My daughter's head would explode. <laughs> They're like, somebody's got to do something about that guy. Mm -hmm. He's up. Problem. So, but I love Popeye because I think that Popeye um, teaches us a lot about what's important in life. You know, what matters and, and the things in people that matter. Sometimes there's good life lessons in cartoons. Do I rate my watercolor by who it's like I do the acrylic lesson? Yeah, I do. I think I would put this at a one to two hoot. And one of the things is, is if you guys, I'll rate them based on what I think. And if you guys could do me the favor of going to the website when you see those lessons being populated there and add your rating, because that will help us this year tune in where you guys feel the one hoot, two hoot, and three hoot ranges. Because sometimes something feels very chill for me and you could be like at home going, this was not chill, this was not fun. And other times you'll be like, I'll be like, I thought it was really hard. And you'll be like, no, that was so much easier. So it's very important that we have a conversation I think if I had just rated this on my own, I would have called it like one and a half hoots. Very easy to hoot. One and a half hoots would have been my thinking on it. Especially if, you know, we cover like, well, we're going to do these, these techniques at the beginning so you guys kind of know what to expect on the technique. But you guys have to let me know. It's very much a conversation. Like, I just redesigned a bunch of um, traceables because the patrons came back and said, I felt the, pa the they were because they can be more of a conversation with me. They were like, these traceables are harder, and I just redesigned those traceables. Mm -hmm. Just redid so, them. Yeah, it's very important that we are in a conversation together. <laughs> Patty, are we going to do World Watercolor Month? Patty? Patty? No, probably not. <laughs> I mean, you can't. <laughs> but I'll be coming. I mean, if you think about it, I'm coming out of April. It's going to be. Mm. I, I would have to plan for a year ahead. Like, I'd have to say this year now to start saying, I think I would do that. And then I would have to beg John and my kids and my family to, like, say that that was okay because they might murder me <laughs> if I just, like, dropped it on them. I'm not saying that. I'm going to be really honest. Could I sit down and paint a little watercolor, two, three, four painting with watercolor a day over the World Watercolor Month? Yeah, I could. And we could all kind of, like, maybe encourage each other to do that and share on social media mm -hmm. that would be very doable because i mean for your watercolor practice we could just you know you can just do little pieces each day and that could be super cheap not particularly overly stressful um not like acrylic april which is like ah joy's like 2022 please all right you we'll guys see. keep we'll working see on me you guys could probably get you could really work on john Send John emails. <laughs> Say we would love it. It would mean so much to us. It would be everything to us. And then we could maybe do it. All right. Thank you very much for your extra questions. Uh, be sure and watch the channel. I'll schedule up another live. Um, I think we'll do something floral next week. Just to, you know, help you guys get into a little light floral space. Something chill and fun. How about dandelions? Mm. I'm feeling like some dandelions. Maybe dandelions next week. Be good to yourselves. Be good to each other. And I want to see you at this watercolor pad real soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>